Hey guys, welcome to this week's Bible study. Old Vinny's here today. Um, they may mention something to me about you guys. Um, want me to talk to you guys about your perception is your reality. So I got to thinking about it and in looking at um, this particular devotion, I think I can get my point across with it. The devotion today comes from uh, the Jesus Calling book. You know, I, I love that book. And, and I think more times than not, it speaks to me about what's going on in my life. And it, it may not be what's happening in your life, but I want to share this devotion with you today. But before I do, I want us to pray together, all right? So let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. I thank you for your blessings. And I thank you, God, that when I'm weak, you are strong. Lord, I know that uh, there's a lot of people watching today that are, are looking for something, something that they can't seem to find in this world that we live in. So God, I pray that today you'd help me show them you. And I ask God to be a blessing to their life today. For I ask it in your precious son's name, Jesus. Amen. All right, let's talk about it together. The, the writer here starts out by saying, don't be so hard on yourself. And, and that speaks to me because I can beat myself up better than anybody in the whole wide world. When I do something wrong and, 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 I, and I make my mad my, my or I make somebody else mad or something, I'm a lot harder on myself than they are on me because I just beat myself up. And, and you may struggle with that same kind of thing. It's, it's a, uh, <laughs> I didn't really realize it until I read this, but it's a pride issue when I'm so hard on myself. Listen, listen to what the, the writer says. It says, don't be so hard on yourself. I can bring good even out of your mistakes. Your finite mind tends to look backward longing to undo the decisions that you come to regret. Listen to this line. This is a waste of time and energy leading only to frustration. Instead of floundering in the past, release your mistakes to me. Look to me in trust, ante anticipating that my infinite cre create, <laughs> I can't speak, creativity can weave both good choices and bad choices into a lovely design. Now, how am I gonna tie that into perception as reality? Well, think about this. How you see yourself and how you see the people around you affects the way you do things. If you have this thought process in your mind about how somebody feels about you, including how you feel about yourself, it affects everything you do. Sometimes people might send you a text message and when you read it, you read it the way you're thinking and then you get mad for what they said when they might not have meant it the way you took it at all. That's why I always encourage people not to text one another because there's no emotion in a text. My perception of how that person feels about me affects how I think about it and how I perceive it. And that's the issue. The same thing is true with our relationship with God. If we think that God is sitting up there going, oh, they did it again, it affects how we act. We walk around defeated and frowning because we're mad at ourselves for the mistakes we made. When if we really understood that Jesus, that God knows we're gonna make them before we ever make them. And he can take that mistake and mold it into our life and turn it into something good. You know, if we could change our focus to what God is trying to do instead of what Vinny's trying to do, you know, I might walk around with a smile on my face more often. And I wouldn't beat myself up so bad when I made a mistake. And if you can do that, if you can focus your attention on the fact that God is going to take your mistake and your victory 
and mold them together to create what he wants you to be, then you might look at your mistakes a different way. Listen to what he says next, because I think this is good too. He says, because you're human, duh, we're going to make mistakes, right? He says, you will continue to make mistakes. Thinking that you should live an error-free life is a symptom of pride. I beat myself up so much about my mistakes, thinking I should be able to overcome them by myself. But we can't. We can't overcome them. Don't think you're good enough to do it. When we have a a habitual sin in our life, something that we just can't seem to stop doing, whether it's gossiping or telling a lie or some other kind of crazy thing that we just can't seem to get past and put down, it's because you can't do it by yourself. Don't think you can. We need an all-knowing, all-loving, all-forgiving Savior to help guide every step that we take. Again, your perception is your reality. If you think you should be able to overcome it by yourself, what do you need God for? See the problem? Pride. We can't do anything on our own. Without him, we are helpless. Without him, we're nothing. So today, think about that. Remember, he wants to help you get through that trouble. He wants to help you solve that mistake. He wants to help you. You can't do it on your own. It's impossible. Impossible. So don't let that be your reality either, that you can fix it because you can't. And that's a big problem for Vinny. But think about this. He says this too. Your failures can be a source of blessing. That don't even make sense, does it? But the scripture tells us that in James that we should count it all joy when we come into diverse trials or tribulations or struggles. Count it all joy. He says you know, your uh, mistakes can be a blessing. Why? Because they humble you and give you empathy for other people and their weakness. See, when you get to the point that you think you can fix everything, then you think everybody else can fix everything too. And you have no sympathy or no empathy for understanding what they're going through. Because you think, well, just stop. (laughs) If if we could do that, I wouldn't be fat. (laughs) Perception. Don't let thinking that you can fix everything ruin you. Understand that mistakes happen and we all make them. We, we can't not make them. We're human. We still have that idemic nature that lives inside of us. Now, every day that you're a Christian, you're trying to put that, put that idemic nature behind you, you know, set that back and walk in the spirit. But the flesh is weak and sometimes it wins. But listen to what he says. Your failures can be a source of blessing, humbling you, and giving you empathy for other people and their weaknesses. And best of all, hear this, failure highlights your dependence on me. You hear that? If we didn't fail, we wouldn't need a savior. We wouldn't need him. We wouldn't be dependent on him for everything. Again, our perception is our reality. If we realize that we're just weak, poor, wretched, blind, and naked. Without him, we can do nothing. If we could rely on that and rest in that and know that when we make a mistake, he forgives us and he's going to use it to fix us. I like that. Maybe it'll help me change my perception of my mistakes. And I think it can help you too. Listen to this last line. I am able, hear me now, He says, I am able to bring beauty out of the mess of your mistakes. Trust me and watch to see what I do. Look, I can tell you from a personal experience that God can take our mistakes and use them 
are wonderful, wonderful blessings in people's lives. See, if you didn't experience the mistake, you wouldn't know how to tell somebody else that you're going to make it through this. If you just will trust God, if you'll just look at what he's trying to do in your life, you'll be able to get through it. My friend Sid one time said, God never wastes your experiences. And that includes our mistakes and our good things. He takes all of those and uses them for his glory. Sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow for me. Sometimes I get so mad at myself when I mess up. But then when I really look at it, when I mess up, all I'm doing is hurting me. You know, I miss the joy that God gives me beating myself up over my mistakes. When if I would just accept the forgiveness that he freely gives to me, if I would just accept that and know that he has a plan and that he is going to use all of my mess to make something beautiful from my mistakes and from my successes. God wants to use every part of you to turn you into the beautiful creature that he, creature that he created you to be. We just have to trust him. Don't let the need to be perfect destroy you. Trust God. When you make a mistake, confess it. Ask him to forgive you. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, 1, 9 that uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a promise that God made to us. So when you make a mistake, confess it. Don't walk around with it. Don't beat yourself up with it like a big club. Just ask God to forgive you for it and set it down and watch what he does with your mistakes because he promised us that he'd make good things come out of those this he says this trust me and watch to see what I will do and then as always that gives us a few scripture references to encourage us along the way and the first one <laughs> wouldn't you know Romans 8 28 it says and we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him and who've been called according to his purpose. Good things, bad things, he can take all of them and turn them into something good. That's a good word, Romans 8, 28. Then also he points out Proverbs eleven two, 2, which says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility, comes wisdom. In other words, when you make a mistake and you think you can fix it, it's a pride problem. Only God can fix our mistakes. Remember that. Let that be your reality. Don't get hung up in being prideful and thinking you can fix it all because it'll just lead to disgrace and embarrassment. But humility brings wisdom. I like that. The last one comes from Micah chapter 7 and verse 7. And it says this, listen close. But as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. What a great promise. What a great reminder for us today. You know, if we could change the way we looked at ourselves, our perception would change. If we would realize the big picture that God has for us. And if we focused on that and not our simple mistakes, and we realize that everything that happens all around us, if we love God and if we're called according to his purpose, the Bible tells us that he'll take it all and put it together for good. Let that be your reality today. Focus on him and what a blessing that he can be in your life. And let that other stuff go. I hope that encouraged you today. And I hope that uh, today you'll examine things in a different light. So that you can have the joy of the Lord. Because it truly is our strength. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. And I thank you for giving me this and showing me this today.
to remind me, God, that I'm not perfect and I can't fix it because if I could fix it, I wouldn't have done it in the first place. But God, you're able. And I know that you will take my mistakes and you'll take my successes and you'll blend them together for your good and for your glory. Help me to be mindful of that today, God, and help me to be a better example for you. For I ask it all in your name. Amen. You guys have a great week. Look forward to seeing you later on this week. But have a blessed day. Bye now.